imagine creating breaking bad the show that many people say is the greatest ever show and when that ends creating a spin off that you can say is even better well that's exactly what wins gilligan and peter gould have done with better call saul So I recently finished watching Better Call Saul which I've been following closely from the past 4 years I think. And let me tell you one thing. I'm a huge fan of Breaking Bad. I watched it completely for I think more than 4 to 5 times, literally. I mean excluding the multiple episode rewatches that I do every now and then. So being a Breaking Bad fan, I always regretted not watching it live when it aired. Obviously because it aired a decade ago and at that time I had no brains to understand its depth. So this time I made sure that I'll watch at least Better Call Saul live when it airs episode by episode. And boy, I must tell you, was it an experience. So the question comes what is it about well definitely about Saul Goodman and as we know it's a spin off of the show Breaking Bad where this person is portrayed as a very sleazy and selfish lawyer who helps Walter White in building his meth empire in Breaking Bad he was completely a side character who was mainly used as a comic relief very cartoonish flashy in appearance and from writing standpoint was very unidimensional so before watching when i got to know that there's a spin off on Breaking Bad and that too about Saul Goodman i was really underwhelmed I just thought like I was kind of disappointed too because I thought what possibly can it be about? I mean I thought it'll kind of be a comedy show where every day he'll just solve an absurd case which will give us a laugh or two. And to be honest that's exactly the creators of the show initially planned out. But all of us, even the creators, couldn't have been more wrong about it. So as I said, this show is about Saul Goodman, but approximately 6 years before the events of Breaking Bad, when he wasn't called Saul, he was just Jimmy McGill. Jimmy is a struggling lawyer in Albuquerque who is shown as kind of man child someone who cuts corners and loves to play scams and I mean not scam scams but you know minor scams so as of now he's not shown as a criminal he's just a ordinary dude and from ordinary I mean a decent human being he also has a big brother named Chuck who is sick as fuck and from what electricity my friends you'll have to watch and see how but also Jimmy respects him a lot because this dude's the most genius lawyer in the entire city. Jimmy also has a love interest in Kim Wexler, another lawyer that works in Chuck's firm, who after watching a couple of seasons, you will agree with me, is completely out of his league. But you know that's the thing, she also loves him back because Jimmy is portrayed as someone who's very likable. He easily impresses anyone. Also he's very good with mouth and that's the reason he always talks his way out of anything. And credit goes to Bob Odenkirk, the actor without a doubt for doing the justice he's done to this role I and mean, this character is so dynamic in terms of the various traits he exhibits over the course of the entire series being funny at times then crying the very next episode aggressive at times and romantic too bob has captured each and every emotion very beautifully especially the last season i mean dude you'll watch it and say that you know this guy bob he truly deserves an emmy now also the story is written and shot in a very non linear fashion So within an episode you might see Bob playing Saul and then Jimmy and then back to Saul and then back to some 20 year old version of Jimmy. So it's highly praiseworthy how Bob jumps back and forth among these personas. Speaking of which, we need to mention the writing of this show. Who will the writers of this show are same as that of Breaking Bad and they have quite literally outperformed themselves. Like truly. Much like Breaking Bad, they have written a masterclass character drama where basically the characters and the decisions are driving the story forward rather than story driving them back. which we see happen in most of the other shows one prime example of it is game of thrones where writers you know just literally fucked up due to their tendency towards speed and spectacle rather than honest character development i mean you know what i'm talking about right it doesn't happen with better call saul the way the story progresses feels very authentic and consistent with its character and the motivations so in a way if you have fully understood the characters you will be able to predict what's going to happen ahead in the show but the thing is most of the time you won't be able to guess it because the characters are so damn complex that it feels like they're fleshed out from reality so you'll never fully understand what their next move is and even if you do rightly predict what's going to happen next then the writers are not like you know just let's dump the plot line and write something that the viewers cannot predict no they're not like that they'll go with it anyhow because that seems the only logical way the story should unfold but still you know they will make you be at the edge of your seat and it cannot be possible without top level dialogue writing sound design and cinematography i mean the way this show is shot it's so monumental 
there's so many wide angle shots of albuquerque which are so hypnotizing and mesmerizing that the city does feel like one of the characters itself there are placed cameras at places where you don't usually expect them to place but which unconsciously creates a sense of unpredictability in your head despite you knowing what's going to happen very much similar to a technique the joker movie used it's also not just about the high budget but also so very creative i remember there's one scene they have shot where a candle flickers in jimmy's room whenever someone opens the door the way they have mapped it flickering with a sense of something dangerous about to happen man i tell you like the first time it flickers it scares the shit out of you but nothing happens and when you're least expecting it it again flickers and you are dead in the moment my friend and i really think this one scene will remain stuck in my head forever not to forget the use of colors and lighting in the show which is very north styled it's a symbolic that you can tell how a character is feeling with just the color of clothes they're wearing it's a technique they use in breaking bad too also in the first half of the show the lights used are yellowish showcasing a lighter tone of the show as compared to more orangish colors in later half of the show as it becomes darker and darker in nature up to a point where it's completely shot in black and white in the post breaking bad timeline denoting that Saul's life has become bleak because we pretty much know from the events of breaking bad you know that lead to Saul disappearing with a new identity changing his name and whatever stuff that happened this show this focuses majorly on how Jimmy becomes Saul What problem does taking on the Saul Goodman persona actually solve? I mean that's how the writers put it. It's often hard to find a synopsis for a show like this because you know this show unlike Breaking Bad doesn't have a theme that's kind of universal. For example, you do can summarize Breaking Bad in a line that an overqualified high school chemistry teacher suddenly gets diagnosed with lung cancer and decides to cook meth to provide for his family, right? But not for this show because it doesn't have a theme to start with. For me, It's mostly a collection of events that happen with Jimmy and how he reacts to them which leads him to his alter ego Saul Goodman. But it's totally possible that you know you watch it for the first time and you interpret it completely differently. You might say that no 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 it's not about Jimmy's transformation but it's the story of two brothers Jimmy and Chuck and their relationship over the years. And why not because their bond is unlike anything you might have ever seen before. The chemistry, the acting, especially that of Chuck, it's just breathtaking. So coming on to Chuck played by Michael McKean for me is one of the best and most interesting written character for the show. And that's weird because you know this guy is so boring his life revolves around just one thing the law. He deprives himself of any fun in life whatsoever. You can say that he is Walt minus all the evilness. And despite all of this when he'll be on screen you won't be able to take your eyes off him. He completely dominates the scene he is in, which uh, mostly includes Jimmy, where Jimmy is just trying to win his respect, his approval. There is also a lot of parallels between their relationship and that of Walt and Jesse's. So if you loved Walt and Jesse scenes together, which we all did, frankly, you are a foreign experience, my friend, with just a different flavor. Similarly, some might say that this show is a love story of Jimmy and Kim, and they are not wrong either, because their relationship is so unique and realistic; it doesn't feel forced. and it's something that is consistent throughout the show whatever jimmy the protagonist is going through kim is also facing with him the same situation again from a show like this which is expected to have a different selling point we get to see a love story which is both beautiful and tragic at the same time making you question if we can love someone truly without having any expectations or are we just parasites feeding off others to complete a void inside ourselves so yeah talking about the other half of this relationship kim wexler I must say whatever backlash the writers faced for Skylar in Breaking Bad and all the criticism around misogyny and her being hypocrite they have taken a note of it because Kim might just be one of the strongest female characters ever written for a TV show she is portrayed as a strong ambitious lady who most of the times saves Jimmy's ass to be very honest and on top of that she is drop dead gorgeous you're going to fall in love with her from the very first episode kudos to the actress too i mean Ray Seahorn for playing it so beautifully I mean I don't know why she gets nominated for supporting actress. She is almost like a lead character of this show and her transformation throughout the series is somehow a separate story in itself. Credit has to be given to the writing for this. Because it has made the show so much multi-layered in nature that everyone will come up with their own interpretation of what it's about. It's telling so many stories simultaneously which are interconnected in ways you never expect. Just like that, we get to see a lot of legal drama in this show. And as we know that this timeline is gonna lead up to Breaking Bad. We do have to expect Carter related stuff as well. Yeah, you heard it right. Gus, Mike, Tuco and all the Breaking Bad mafias are back. For more seasons, these two worlds kind of run parallelly. 
You do enjoy the cartel side of drama, but still it doesn't strike at first like why they're showing it because you know it feels kind of detached from the main crux of the show. But then in the later seasons, gradually you see both the worlds merging into one, and that's when the show picks up the pace. There's even one event I can remember clearly where you see exactly these both worlds colliding into one, and boom, your jaw is gonna drop when it happens. And suddenly all the things that you thought were irrelevant in the initial seasons will start making sense. Because these writers really love to do foreshadowing of events, places, characters, fate, you name it. It is a masterclass in visual storytelling. But there's one thing that might concern you because it did concern me as well. Was how will they manage to, you know, create suspense in the show just like its parent show because it's a prequel, right? We already know the fate of most of the characters. That is how they wind up in Breaking Bad. Even that for Saul. So let me answer that for you. Firstly for Saul, you're not shown his fate in Breaking Bad. He just used the disappearer services and ran away. That's it. But the show focuses on his actual fate, like the real fate, like what happened to him post the events of Breaking Bad. That you don't know, right? And on top of that, they have introduced a brand new bunch of other characters in the show with whom you connect on a more biological level. And the fact that they were not present in the Breaking Bad timeline just makes you wonder like what happened to them. Whether they died or were they just not shown in Breaking Bad? You're constantly worried about them. Just take Kim for example. The biggest worry every Better Call Saul viewer had was where was Kim during Breaking Bad? Talking about new characters, do you remember there was one line in Breaking Bad where Saul is basically kidnapped by Walt and Jesse and he's yelling, "Oh no 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 no, no. it wasn't me, it was Ignacio, he's the one. Lalo didn't send you, no Lalo." Well, this line, which was intended to be just a filler in Breaking Bad back then, turns out to be the origin of two of the best characters of the entirety of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul universe. Ignacio Varga and Lalo Salamanca. Both these guys are from the cartel side and you can say that all the fireworks and basically the major plot conflict revolves around them and this dialogue. So talking about the first one out of the two, Ignacio, well this guy you can say that he's not someone around whom the show focuses primarily and yet the way he's used in the show as a prop for the plot to move forward is just amazing. I really like his character because despite him being involved with the criminal world He's always been shown as someone who's fighting for love constantly and he's always trying to you know break ties with the cartel but as we know like this breaking bad universe has always been brutal with people who have tried to break good he always gets wind up in trouble but this guy you know he's a born survivor all the cartel mafias are just trying to control him like a puppet throughout the show much like we see happen with Jesse but he overcomes each and every one of them over and over again There's a lot of parallels that you can draw between his arc and Jesse's arc. Seeing his struggle, you feel sympathetic towards him, more so like you did for Jesse in Breaking Bad, but he's just more savage. There's one scene where he's going to make you believe that he's truly the most badass character in the show. Now, talking about the other character from this show, for whom the more I say, the lesser it is. The source of absolute chaos in this show, Lalo Salamanca. If you've seen Breaking Bad and you think that Gus Fring is the best villain of this universe, Well then you are up for a show my friend because what Joker is to Dark Knight Lalo is to Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul universe Really How lucky for me So when you mix athleticism of Ignacio craziness of Tupo skill set of Mike brain of Gus and unpredictability of Walt you get Lalo Salamanca This guy is so charming and yet menacing that when he's on screen you just cannot take your eyes off him He'll probably come in later half of the show but when he comes he becomes the main character The story revolves around him. You'll get hooked to the show. He's basically the one who will bring the fireworks in the show, literally. He's so dangerous that he even haunts Gus in his dreams. And the most terrifying thing about him is that he's just so fucking happy all the time, like truly. He becomes the life of the party wherever he goes. Also, I love the contrast between him and Gus. Like with Gus, he's kind of guy with whom you'll think of taking an appointment to meet him, right? But with Lalo, it's completely different. You love to have a casual drink or two with him, but later if you do cross him, believe me he's going to kill you. He just made this entire show for me. He straight up maybe the best villain in this entire Breaking Bad universe. Obviously I've not forgotten about Gus, but you know still. Speaking of which, I need to mention how well this show has taken characters like Mike and Gus from Breaking Bad and instead of using them as nostalgia driving trope, which most of the other shows would have done, they have fitted these characters so beautifully here that it actually makes sense. They've polished these characters more and expanded our knowledge of what we know about them, because they are not like the Gus and Mike we used to see in Breaking Bad. Here we get to see a very different side of them. 
their imperfections, their backstory in a more humanized form. So for viewers, the quest becomes of finding like how Gus and Mike end up the way they were in Breaking Bad, like from a behavioral standpoint. Especially that of Gus, you know, because this guy is shown as a complete sadist. That's exactly my impression of him as after watching this show. I've always felt like, you know, there's more to his story, including the cartel and all while watching Breaking Bad, considering how mysterious he was. And yes, we get to see that only because this guy, if you hurt him really bad, he's not going to kill you. Instead, he's going to make you live for it and suffer each and every day till your last breath until you compensate for that hurt. He's a man on a journey of revenge from the cartel. He's a man who knows what mountain he has to climb in the coming years. And to succeed in that, he has to make himself deprive of every pleasure there is. And coming on to Mike, well, we get to see a lot of his personal life here. He's just like a big grandpa of this whole show. When he tells you to do something, you have to do it. We have seen so much of him in this show, yet so less that he needs his own spin-off series, like literally. Anyhow, coming on to one important topic that should be discussed. Many viewers might watch this show and for the first couple of seasons might think that, you know, it's kind of slow. But I get it, you know, it's all built up. Just stick with it. That's the thing with both these shows, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. They make you spend time with the characters more and more so that, you know, you build a connection with them, which they later use to pay off in massive proportions. But what's even more unique about Better Call Saul is that it's a slow burn show by its own nature. Unlike Breaking Bad that was very action heavy, Better Call Saul relies majorly on dialogues and its heavy character study. It being the spin-off of Breaking Bad, it's normal to expect it to be like that. I get it. But it's also brave enough to, you know, disappoint you in that way. Because it may be in the same universe, but it never ever tries to be like Breaking Bad. And if you still want it to be like that, then maybe you're looking through the wrong lens, my friend. It's very much its own thing. And that's why, you know, calling this show a spin-off is also kind of understatement. You have to, you know, appreciate it for being kind of standalone show. It may also be very tough to understand for the mass audience because this series believes in showing rather than telling. The plot lines are so subtle sometimes that, you know, you might watch an entire season and do get an overview of what's happening in the show, but still might fail to understand at all, like what actually were they trying to convey beneath that. Happened with me as well. You know, for the first time when I watched the first five seasons of this show, I just used to take the lawyer side so lightly and only wait for the action to come in that I eventually ended up calling this show average. But later when I rewatched it, giving it the respect that it deserves, I ended up making this review. So you can just imagine how great it is. I also find this very amusing that, you know, whenever the creators have put a song in any of the episode as a montage, then that song is not only describing the visuals that are shown while it plays, but it also perfectly captures how the story has unfolded till that point or how it's gonna unfold later. So do they pick up a song and write their plot around it or do they just eventually end up finding a song that matches the plot? I mean, like it's so rare, I'm genuinely asking this from the writers because they did this throughout Breaking Bad as well. So yeah, I mean, these are my thoughts on Better Call Saul, which I think I ended up liking more than Breaking Bad, despite it being very dialogue driven show. Uh, and this is because of the great cinematography, acting, dialogue writing, script writing, editing, I mean, you name it. I haven't seen such a well-crafted show in years. I think it is the most well-crafted show ever. And I'm saying this because I've seen a lot of shows, so yeah. And especially these two creators, Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould, I mean, these guys have landed the perfect ending of two shows back to back, one after the other. I mean, it cannot be a fluke. It is not a one-hit wonder, to be very honest. Especially this show's final season is as good as Breaking Bad's final season. And I think you're gonna like it for different reasons. This show, for me, has proven that, you know, you just don't need the fate of the characters to be at stake, you know, in order to make the show suspenseful, which I think happened a lot in Breaking Bad and I'm not saying it's a bad thing but you know it's just a different way of you know making show very entertaining. Actually should not also you know compare these two shows because you know these two shows constitute a single complete story and the way Better Call Saul has complemented Breaking Bad I think after watching the final season of Better Call Saul you won't be able to watch Breaking Bad the same way again and you definitely need a rewatch for it. So if you haven't watched this show already I hope this video of mine will make you give it a try and I hope it's worth your time. And if you do have watched it already, then do, you know, tell me in the comments, like, what are the things you liked about the show and what are the things you didn't like about the show. And also, if you do want me to, you know, review more TV shows or movies, just do tell me in the comments again. And please do consider subscribing my channel because it will mean a lot to me. I'm just trying to be more consistent on this channel. So, yeah. Till then, it's all good, man. If there's any thought, better think of me for a little support. Out of time I need, it'll be enough